Welcome to this 9 minute video that will give you some fast background on Glare and Glare metrics. I'm Anna Bay, Technical Sales Director at Viso Systems. This excellent photo illustrates the principle of Glare. Our eyes adapt to the light of a powerful light source. Details in the rest of the field of view are hard to see. But when shading away the Glare source, the rest of the scene is much easier to see. Essentially, this is what we want to achieve when trying to reduce glare. Everything is visible in a scene where the luminance variation is less than 1 to 100. There are two types of glare. Disability glare, which might be caused by car headlights or the sun and which limits vision. And discomfort glare, which doesn't limit vision but is simply uncomfortable or annoying. This is what we encounter in indoor environments, and also what UGR is all about. Imagine a person sitting at his desk in a work environment. We would like to evaluate glare perceived by this person. For each of the light sources in the space, our evaluation should include the following parameters. Obviously, the luminance of the light source. How bright is the luminaire? Secondly, the relative size matters. The size is measured as the solid angle subtended by the source at the observer's eye. A third issue is the luminance of the background, as we're measuring contrast, so this is important. Last but not least, it matters how close the glare source is to the observer's line of sight. The closer, the, the worse. Light sources above your head do not contribute. These essential parameters go into the UGR formula. The luminance or the brightness of the glare source is very important and is even to the second power. The size of the light source, as perceived by the observer, is represented by the relative solid angle in the field of view. Both the source luminance and the size are above the fraction line, which means that the larger values, the more glare. The background luminance or brightness is below the fraction line, so a bright background will lower the contrast and thereby the UGR. The last parameters, the Goth Position Index, accounts for the light source's proximity to the line of sight. The closer, the smaller, and the higher the UGR. UGR is calculated for all light sources in the space and summarized. The rest of the function contain operators that makes the UGR a nice round number, usually between 13 and 28. The old UGR standard is the world recognized standard of specifying glare. Many regional design standards refer to UGR when specifying glare limits, for example, the European standard EN 12464-1. According to this standard, the maximum glare level in office spaces is 19 and in hallways typically 22. At UGR 13, glare is barely noticeable, whereas at 28, glare is intolerable. Many suppliers state that their products are, for example, a UGR 19 product. But as the UGR formula clearly shows, UGR is always contextual. Even a candle can be glary in a space with black walls. Consequently, no lighting product can be said to have UGR 19. With modern design software, UGR can be calculated in great detail. This image shows a UGR calculation grid in a height of 1.2 meter, which is a normal eye height for a sitting person. A grid like this is very valuable because it helps to place desks and chairs in the least glary positions. Further, these calculations can include many different luminaire types in irregular patterns. UGR is the best method that we've got, but it will not render very precise results. There is definitely no reason to calculate UGR with decimals. But UGR works well in practice. Experience shows that office workers will indeed start to complain when UGR is higher than 20, but will not be able to distinguish small differences. The whole UGR methodology is from 1995, where advanced lighting design software was not available. Hence, there was a need to find practical solutions, and the tabular method was developed. To avoid numerous complicated calculations, manufacturers of luminaires 
are still asked to calculate UGR for a number of standard rooms and standard observer positions. This is the so-called tabular method to evaluate UGR. It's worth noticing that the limiting value set forth in a regional standard as a EN 12464-1 actually refer to the tabular method and not to the much more detailed modern UGR computations that are possible for in, in for instance, Relux and Dialux. The standard room calculations going into the UGR table are based on rooms that are certainly not real. They have a shoebox shape and no doors, windows or furniture. There is only one type of luminaire in a symmetrical arrangement. Luminance is distributed evenly across the luminous parts of the luminaire. Glare is evaluated from only two viewing positions in the middle of the end and side walls. The reflectance options are limited to just a few standard values. So how do you read the UGR tables in relation to your specific installation? First, you need to find H, which is the vertical distance between the eyes of the occupants and the light source height. This could be, for example, 3.2 meter minus 1.2 meter equaling 2 meter. Secondly, you must establish the best approximation to the floor dimensions as a multiple of H. For example, if the floor is 4 by 8 meter, this equals 2H by 4H. Next, you need to find a combination of standard reflectances that are closest to your actual space. This could be, for example, 70% reflectance for the ceiling and 30% for the walls. The floor is always as low as 20% to compensate for the lack of furnishing. The fourth step is looking up the UGR values crosswise and lengthwise. In this case, they are both 19.3 as the luminaire has a round symmetrical light distribution. The last step is looking for corrections depending on mounting distances. The larger distances, the more correction. In this case, the luminaires might be separated with a distance of 1.5 h and UGR should be corrected with a plus 0.1 to a minus 0.2. Resultingly, the UGR in a space is from 19.1 to 19.4 and as we're not counting decimals, the maximum UGR can be said to be 19. UGR tables are really not very precise because so many assumptions and approximations are made, but there are certainly advantages. The tabular values give you a great overview of the glare potential and it makes it easier to compare products even before making a detailed simulation. If all values are over 20, it will probably be hard to make the luminaire work in an office space. UGR tables are a VSO standard report output, provided that the light distribution is round symmetrical or has th two orthogonal symmetry planes. Thank you very much for listening. Questions and comments are welcome on info at vsosystems.com.